Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module 18, lesson one. I'm gonna start off by going over the I can objective. It says I can convert between any two metric units of length, liquid, volume, or mass. The learning objective is to convert and compare metric units. And the prior learning is that students understood the relative sizes of measurement units within the metric system, and students expressed measurements in a larger unit in terms of a smaller unit. All right, so moving into the lesson, we're on page 455. We have a step it out number one. It says the Lesothosaurus was one of the smallest dinosaurs. It had a mass of about 3,630 grams. About how many kilograms was the mass of the Lesothosaurus? So we have 3,000. We have 3,630 grams. We wanna know how many kilograms that is. So it gives us a conversion table right below. So it starts us in like kind of what the ones place value would be. It shows meters, liters, or grams. So it's, sharp, sh it's starting us in grams and it's moving us to kilograms. So we are starting in grams, we're moving to decagrams, then hectograms, then kilograms. So for A, it says compare grams to kilograms. It says how many factors of 10 separate the grams and the kilograms. So every time we jump to the next value or look at it almost like a place value, that would be one factor. So we made three jumps, which means we are three factors away from in grams to kilograms. It says how many grams are in one kilogram. So we know that if we did three factors of 10 each time we move, we're multiplying by 10. So if we multiplied by 10, then 100, then 1,000, three zeros, three jumps. So we would say that there are 1,000 grams to be equal to one kilogram. Now for B, it says to convert from grams to kilograms, are you converting from a smaller unit to a larger unit or the opposite, from a larger unit to a smaller unit? We are starting with a smaller unit grams, which means it's a lot smaller, and then we're moving to a really big kilogram, right? Because there's a bunch of grams. There's a thousand really small grams to equal one kilogram, which is really big. So we're going from the smaller unit to the larger unit. Now, what operation will you use to make this conversion? So think about if you look up in the second um, bullet point under A, it says there's a thousand grams to every one kilogram. So if we have a bunch of small units and we need just one big unit, we need to go from a thousand to one. We're going smaller. The number is getting smaller. And the way that we do that is we're going to be dividing. So then underneath it has our problem. So it says 3,630 grams and we are gonna be dividing in this and we're gonna, we found out that we are dividing by 1,000 since there's 1,000 grams per kilogram. Now we need to figure out what the answer is. So remember when we multiply or divide by powers of 10, especially with the metric conversions, we're gonna be working with those decimals and we're gonna be moving the decimal in the same hops just like we did from finding grams to kilograms. So we moved our, our measurement from gram to kilogram. We made three hops to the left, which means we're going to do the same thing in our number. We're going to start with our decimal point at the end of the zero, and we're going to move it to the left three times, which means our decimal point is now where our comma was. So now it reads 3.63. So in D, it says how many kilograms was the mass of the Lesothosaurus? It was 3.63, and we found kilograms, so we're going to write kg for kilograms. All right, let's go ahead and move the page. So we're on page 456, number two. It says the wingspan for a dinosaur, I'm sorry, the largest wingspan for a dinosaur belonged to a species of... Whoo, uh, Quetzalcoatlus. What was the wingspan in millimeters and what was the wingspan in kilometers? So again, it gives us this same 
measurement chart below a conversion table and it already put the one and the six in for us because over to the right it shows us a picture of that dinosaur and it says that it's 16 meters remember each digit needs its own place value so it already has it kind of set up for us with that decimal at the end of the 16. Now we have four problems that we're going to be converting first we're going to convert the measurement to millimeters all right, so we're going to shift the decimal point to the location for the unit of millimeters. So we're going to start at the decimal point and we're going to make hops until we get it to the millimeter um, section. So it says, how many places did you move? How many hops? And in which direction, left or right? For B, it says, after shifting the decimal point, write zeros as needed to write the number of millimeters. So you, if you have any empty hops, write zeros in them and then write the number that it is now with the unit. And then for C, we're going to be doing the opposite. So to convert the measurement to kilometers, we're going to shift the decimal point to the location for a unit to kilometers, 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 same thing. So how many places and in which direction did you shift the decimal point? So again, start at, back to where it was in the picture and then move that decimal point until you get to the kilometers. So how many places did you move and then in which direction? And then for D, after shifting the decimal point, write zeros in only the empty spaces and then tell me what that number would be. All right, go ahead and try these four questions and then come back and we will solve them together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, great, let's go ahead and solve these. So for A, I'm starting at my decimal point and I'm gonna move it one, two, three times so that my decimal point is now at the millo, is at the millimeters. So I moved it three places and in which direction I did three to the right. It says, after shifting the decimal point, we want to write zeros as needed. So are there any empty spots? Yeah, all three of my jumps are empty spots. So I'm going to do a one, a two, and a three zeros there. So when I write it, I have 16 and three zeros. So that is 16,000. And then the units that we found were in millimeters. So that's just going to be an M and an M for millimeters. For C, now we're going the opposite way. I'm gonna go ahead and erase so that we can see our original decimal point so that we can see exactly what's happening when we move to the um, kilometers. So to convert the measure to kilometers, shift the decimal point to the location for the unit of kilometers. How many places and in which direction? So we're starting in our original decimal and we're gonna to go to deco, hecto, then kilo. All right, so now our decimal point is right there. So this time we went three to the left. So now after shifting the decimal point, right zeros is needed. I moved past the six, past the one, so I only have one empty spot, which means I'm just gonna have one zero as needed. So what's the wingspan of this dinosaur? It is 0 0.016, and then the unit that we just found was kilometers, so that's going to be km. All right, great. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems for this lesson, and I'll see you back for lesson two.